Hey you guys, what's up? It's your girl Dove Angel D. Yes, we're back with some celebrity gossip. And today it's about Diana Ross dating Gene Simmons, former band member of KISS. Yes, I know, a shocker, right? Diana Simmons dated for two to three years. Now, according to Mickey, this isn't new information. Yeah, it's out there. I must say, I had no idea about this love entanglement until Terry TJ brought this to my attention. I was like, what? So, big thank you, Terry. Okay, y'all ready? Because I'm getting to the good stuff. Now, this story is confirmed and brought back to life by Mickey Free, former band member of Shalimar. A little known fact is that the Kiss frontman's influence eventually led Ross to land one of the biggest record deals in history. People tend to forget when going over general talking parts of the grandest of Grant's Motown divas, Diana Ross, we always go with the quote-unquote Brewster Project, Rex to international superstar riches still, that includes American singer and founding member of Motown vocal female group The Supremes, along with Mary Wilson, Barry Gordy, and their famous offspring as supporting characters. People seldom deep dive in what happened in between. Ever wondered why Barry Gordy and Diana never got married? Well, according to his bio, at the time, Barry was in between marriages and baby mamas while together with Ross, She ended up leaving him two months into her pregnancy when she married Robert Ellis Silverstein. She had Rhonda Suzanne, who's Barry Gordy's biological daughter, but legally, she's Robert Ellis's daughter. So Barry Gordy was married and divorced three times and had a total of eight children. You might be wondering why I said at the beginning why this was a, a love entanglement. Well, here's the reason. Jean and Cher were in a high-profile relationship before hooking up with Diana. And Diana and Cher were best friends as well. So Cher at 33 told People Magazine, quote, we just had a wonderful suite at Chicago's Ritz-Carlton overlooking the lake and Jean sat at breakfast that it never ceases to amaze him how comfortable he is with me. He has never had a steady girlfriend, never had a relationship with anybody. That's pretty heavy stuff. He's a very strange, complicated and honest person. Cher described her relationship with Simmons. We shared the best relationship I've ever had with a human being. I'm going through a very liberated phase right now. I think I have a very masculine attitude towards dating. Jean might spend time with other women and stay the night, but he wants her to leave in the morning so he can get on with his day.
I've always been afraid to talk about the relationship before. I thought it would be the end of KISS. From a publicity angle, this isn't the most popular thing we could do. The fans who buy the records think it's horrible. They're very jealous and very possessive. But that's tough. I'm crazy about Cher. Nuts about her. She's my first love. She's an untainted soul who's never done anything bad to anybody. The two lovebirds phone daily and jet so often to meet up for stolen weekends. Jean flew intercontinental for as little as a night together. Cher had just bought a 250,000 log cabin in Aspen where they'll spend Christmas. Marriage was spoken of as a possibility, even kids maybe, and to think that Jean would have never met her if her son hadn't asked Jean for an autograph for his mom. Little did Cher know, her picture-perfect relationship and her friendship with her bestie was about to end. Initially, Cher and I lived together in Malibu. One Christmas, I asked her what I should buy her, and she said, Call my friend Diana Ross. She will tell you exactly what I like, and she is my best friend. So, I called Diana up, and we went shopping. Then, our feelings for each other developed very fast, and we started a relationship together. Oh my god, she's so annoying! Jean admitted he broke Cher's heart. He continued to say the messy situation marked the end of the women's friendship, despite the fact they had been friends for years. Quote, I guess thereafter, Cher and Diana never spoke again. Conveniently, Diana was also recently single at the time. You guys remember The Bodyguard, right? With Whitney and Kevin Costner? That script was actually written in the 70s, with Ross and actor Ryan O'Neill in mind as the lead roles. Diana and Ryan briefly dated as well. Anyway, moving forwards. Kiss is known for their heavy makeup. On stage, Simmons dressed like a fire-breathing vampire, costumed ghoul, and was known for the way he would lap his snake-like tongue at his audience. Quote, part of the gimmick during the time he and Diana dated was that the group was never to be seen in public without makeup. So whenever the guys ventured out into the world, it was with handkerchiefs covering their lower halves of their faces. She, Diana, would sometimes wear one too. Underneath the makeup was a savvy businessman. He convinced Ross to leave Motown Records. Simmons was known to be a brilliant and confident businessman, and when Diana confided in him, telling him she didn't feel totally appreciated at Motown or by Gordy, Jean said, get the hell away from there. What are you, nuts? Another source claims Simmons himself strong-armed Gordy into letting her free. He told Barry Gordy that Diana had an offer from another record company and that if he wanted her to stay at Motown, he'd have to match it. Simmons' business savvy rubbed off on Ross and apparently she wanted to manage a guy like Prince, according to Free. Simmons knocked on the door. He was with Diana Ross, who has been his girlfriend at the time. And uh, he said, I'd like to introduce you to someone, and it was Diana. And she was looking for a guy like me, like Prince, if you can believe that, early 80s, 1980. And uh, Simmons said, this is the guy for you. Long story short, uh, Diana and Jean set up a private showcase for me at SIR, and she signed me to her company in 1980, I think it was. And you got me and Diana Ross, I'm on tour with Diana Ross playing 20,000 seat arenas across the world. Diana Ross and Gene Simmons were the ones that introduced me to Michael Jackson. I'm not even ashamed to say this. My whole look, my vibe, everything was princely-esque because that's where I wanted to take it. It was happening at the time. It was hot, you know, and shoot, I can wear eyeliner with the best of them, baby.
didn't want to be in the band, actually. <laughs> and Simmons talked to me, and he said, you know what? It would be like getting into a limousine instead of a taxi cab. I knew what he meant. I joined Shalimar. A year later, I won a Grammy, Platinum Records. Right. The rest is history. Eventually, the rock star lifestyle caught up with Ross. Jean had a reputation as a womanizer. While Cher allowed him to have one night stands on the road, the family oriented Miss Goody Goody wanted more. After a string of indiscretions, she wanted Simmons by her side every single minute. Kiss fans and bandmates saw the high profile romance as the antithesis of the mystery they felt was a necessary component of who they were, and the band eventually ended breaking up. To this day, Simmons speaks fondly of Diana, quote, she kept me on my toes. I loved that she was such a strong woman who was confident in her own skin. Keep tuning in because there's always more coming 